in our last class we have already learned about the symbols or building blocks of drawing a flowchart in today's class we will use those symbols to draw a few basic flowcharts we already know that flowchart is a diagrammatic representation of an algorithm it is a step by step approach and it is a 2d diagram that represents several steps that are involved in a particular activity task or workflow the first example will be of a very basic flowchart where an activity will have four steps and none of the steps will be dependent on any decision and we know that any flowchart starts with a block which represents the starting point of that workflow or that activity and it ends with a similar kind of block which represents that it is the end of the workflow so this is the starting point of that flowchart where the start is represented by the relevant symbol then as i said that activity or process is divided into four steps so it will be followed by the first step of that process or activity then sequentially we will perform the second step then sequentially the third step then the fourth step and as i said the none of the steps will be based on any decision so once we have performed or executed step 4 that will be the end of that process so it will be followed by the corresponding symbol which will represent the end of that process this is very generic example of drawing a flow chart and the same process now will be performed again in four steps but this time it will be based on some decision so let's see how it will be drawn so again it will start with the relevant symbol or block that will represent that that is the starting point of the flow chart then we will execute step 1 of that process then we will execute the second step and as per the previous logic it was supposed to be the third step and then followed by the fourth step but here we have a slight difference and that difference is between step 2 and step 3 we will take some decision and based on that decision accordingly we will proceed now after a decision has been taken it will have generally two outcomes either the outcome of that decision is yes or true or the outcome of the decision is no or false now if the outcome of the decision is yes then we will proceed step 3 and then that will be followed by step 4 but if the outcome of the decision is no then directly we will proceed step 4 and we will skip step 3 and this is what here the scenario is so here we are not executing all the steps sequentially rather step 3 and step 4 we are executing based on some decision and once the step 4 has been executed that will be the end of the process so accordingly we will represent by the relevant symbol to end that flow chart next we will take an example where a bulb is not working so to draw the flow chart we will first start with the relevant symbol which will represent again the starting point of that activity or flow chart then there will be a step or activity which will represent or tells us that bulb does not glow so if the bulb is not glowing properly then first we have to check whether that bulb is plugged in properly or not so there based on that we have to take some decision so first we have to check that whether that bulb is plugged in or not if the bulb is not properly plugged in then what we have to do we have to plug in that properly so accordingly we have to follow a step so if the outcome of that decision is no then we have to plug that bulb properly and then definitely the bulb will glow so that will be the end of the process but if the bulb is already plugged in properly then we have to see whether the bulb is already burnt out or not so if the bulb is burned out then what we have to do we have to take step accordingly so we have to replace the bulb and once the bulb is replaced then that will again glow so that will be the end of the process but if the bulb is not completely burned out if some portion of that bulb has been damaged and that can be repaired then we will go to repair that bulb and once the bulb will be repaired properly that bulb will again glow 
so that will be again end of that process next we will draw another simple flow chart where we have two numbers and we have to first find the greater number or the number that has higher value and then we have to take the square value of that and we have to display finally so as we know this will be the first symbol which will represent the starting point of that flow chart or starting point of that activity then what we will do we have to first know what are the two numbers so we have to input those numbers accordingly we will use the relevant block or symbol and we will input the first number and once the first number is known then we will input the second number and this time also we will use the same type of symbol and once we know both the numbers then we have to take the decision which number is greater so we will use the corresponding block accordingly and there we will check which number is greater and accordingly the statement we will write inside that symbol or inside that block so here the first number has been represented by n1 and the second number has been represented by n2 and what condition we are checking whether n1 is greater than n2 or not so it will have two outcomes either n1 is greater than n2 or n1 is less than n2 so if n1 is greater than n2 if the decision is true or yes then we will take n1 and then we will take the square value of that n1 which is represented here by x1 so accordingly we have used the relevant block or symbol and once the square value of that greater number n1 has been calculated then we have to display that output and accordingly we will use that relevant block and once that has been displayed the output then we have to terminate or end our process but this is when the outcome of that decision was yes or true but what if the outcome of that decision is no if it is no then that signifies that n2 is greater than n1 so we have to take n2 and then we have to take the square value of n2 and that has been represented by x2 so our next task will be to display that output or the value of x2 which is the square value of n2 which is the greater number among the two given numbers and once x2 has been displayed that will be the end of the process and accordingly we use the particular symbol so in this class we have gained some knowledge how to draw a flowchart and we have seen a few basic examples in the next class we will be learning something new Till then stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.